Yes, you guys, welcome back to another News Daily video powered today by Snickers Protein. Now, throughout this entire January trans window, I'm teaming up with Snickers Protein to bring to you guys the Snickers Protein fan line. So, basically, this allows you the opportunity to let off some steam to get involved in this window by sending your questions towards me and then I'll be answering three questions in every single News Daily video until the window ends. So without wasting any more time, I'm gonna be answering the three questions that were sent to me. The first question has been sent by Dara and he wants to know whether we should make an attempt to sign Kulip Bali in the next summer window. With Kulip Bali, I do believe that when it comes to negotiating with Napoli, there have been some difficulties in the past and considering the club's transfer strategy plans with centre-backs, we're looking at younger centre-back targets that have European experience, that have experience playing in the highest leagues and right now, it does seem like Kula Bali isn't necessarily on the transfer list now. Next question has been sent in by Gabriel and he wants to know whether it is going to be possible to sell some of the squad players in case a new manager comes in and personally, this is entirely up to the boards. Of course, throughout the last summer window, we had so much interest with so many of these players and unfortunately, the boards weren't able to find the best agreement that the club wanted to allow these players to leave. So... You know, we've seen over the past few seasons that we've struggled to sell players on and we're constantly forced to loan players every single time. So it's quite hard for me to say, you know, with the most confidence that we're guaranteed to sell these guys off in the next window. And to answer the final question by Aiden, he wants to know whether it's possible to loan some of these guys out in this current window. And to answer that, I think it's quite hard because there has to be interest in the first place and... As we've seen, for example, with Marcus Alonso, there has been zero interest for him in this window, which is a bit disappointing and, of course, puts even more pressure on us to, uh, you know, actually sell this guy on. So it is going to be quite difficult. Let's see what happens. And, of course, you guys, if you want your questions answered by me in every single News Daily video, all you have to do is at me on Twitter, followed by the hashtag fanline, followed by your questions. So you guys get involved. Before I go, you guys, just to let you know, on the 1st of Feb, there is going to be a massive Transfer Deadline Day stream powered by Snickers Protein. I'm going to be featured alongside Robbie from AFTV, plus many, many more. It is going to be on Ball Street's YouTube channel, so make sure you guys have that date set. And of course, while you're at it, why not get yourself a Snickers too? So without wasting any more time, we start things with the first major story today. It's in regards to Frank Lampard's future. And it seems like Frank may have more time to potentially turn things around. Now, this article came up from The Independent earlier today, and there are a few major reasons behind why Lampard might be getting more time. And to start with the first one, it does seem like the club do not want to sign an interim manager in this period. And I'll let you guys know a few things that I've been hearing behind the scenes. I'll let you know one. And one thing I was hearing was that there was potential talks with Steve Holland in regards to his availability as an interim manager. Now, based on the report that came up from The Independent, I'd assume that those talks are not progressed. But considering our previous history with Steve, I mean, of course, he was our former assistant manager. When Mourinho left, he took over the first team and, you know, he really produced a very impressive win, a 3-1 win against Sunderland where he got Oscar absolutely firing. Uh, Oscar looked like a completely different player playing in that one game for Sunderland compared to anything we ever saw from him playing under Mourinho. And of course, we can't forget under Sarri's reign as well when there was pressures behind him and, you know, the potential possibility that he could have been sacked, Steve Holland was approached as a potential interim manager. So I'm guessing things have not progressed. And if you can't get Steve, then who else are you going to sign as your interim manager? Another reason is due to Lampard's icon status, which does make a lot of sense. I guess you can't really escape that. Lampard played a significant, significant part in helping us get the trophies that we got over the years. A massive part, and I guess... The club just can't easily disrespect that and just sack him. There's actually two more reasons as well. For the third reason, the club are looking towards other examples like Oli Solskjaer and Arteta who, you know, when they originally signed, they had some terrible runs, some really big winless runs as well, but over time, they were able to turn things around. So there is a degree of patience. And for the fourth and final major reason, if Lampard was to leave, the club have preferred candidates that are only available in the summer window. Right now, Nagelsmann is the leading candidate, not because he's a great tactician, but 
On top of that, of course, he got the best out of, you know, the big money signing in Timo Werner. So naturally, you know, due to his experience working alongside players like this and because he could continue what's being built at this club too, he would make a ton of sense. And following Nagelsmann is Thomas Tuchel. Now, I told you guys this quite a few times now that he already held meetings with the club back before we signed Sari and he really impressed the club because he knew all the youth players by their names and just really had an in-depth knowledge about the club, which of course would mean that anytime there's a job that's potentially available, you know, you're gonna go back to guys that you know, that you have good impressions of. And, and even though Tuchel is a bit of a Marmite manager, you can't deny that he's a great tactician. Now you guys, I'm gonna give my thoughts and opinions behind the story. And as it's said in the article, when it comes to signing an interim manager, one of the reasons behind why the club aren't really feeling that is that they're worried it could cause more harm in the long term and you know that does make quite a bit of sense um you know realistically if you're hiring a manager that has a philosophy and has a clear style of play these guys need to have a pre-season to imprint their ideas and during a season like this where's the time to really do anything like that you know no manager's gonna you know potentially jeopardize their name in the game by taking over a job right now that requires a lot of work, that requires some players to be sold off so others can be brought in too. And of course, the last thing maybe anyone needs is for there to be like a drastic tactical change in the middle of the season. That could make integration a bit more difficult. So from the club perspective, it does make sense. In football, one of the key things that managers do need is time, you know, time to imprint their ideas, to work alongside the players, to understand them, to build those relationships, to, do everything basically there is no quick magic solution that can instantly turn things around and it's really no surprise that if you look at some recent managerial uh, signings you know for example Hazen Hutu, Pochettino, uh, Klopp so many who took control of clubs during you know the middle of the season those were always wasted seasons because there was really no time to do anything so you guys in the comments below give me your thoughts and opinions how do you feel maybe based on what the club are saying it is right to give Lampard time to potentially turn things around or do you feel like you're not seeing enough of anything yet to even have that confidence to begin with? Now, we move on to the second story today. I want to speak about Loftus-Cheek and of course, it seems that Loftus-Cheek's stock is rising and rising and rising. He had another impressive appearance against Manchester United, which follows his Tottenham appearance and his game against QPR as well. Now, of course, Ruben was not perfect. He had some amazing opportunities to potentially get a goal, which he has been getting throughout his other previous games. However, it's seeing the manner in which Ruben is now playing. His speed is back. He's playing with that pace again, that intensity. His his first touch is outstanding. He's beating his man. He's using his power as well as alongside his skill and his technique. And right now for Fulham, Ruben is always part of every good attacking play produced by the team. As I said after his performance against Tottenham, it really feels like Ruben has really starts to find his groove again. He feels confident. He feels confident in his body. And with more time, as he only gets better and better and better, we are going to see him converting those efforts into goals. We're going to see him converting his creativity into assists and that's when we're really going to know that Ruben is fully, fully back. But compared to what we saw from him during his spells in the Frank Lampard, you know, coming back from a severe injury, you know, COVID affecting his rehabilitation as well, where he was playing games for the under-23s once COVID came, it really just, you know, slowed the progress down and he looks like a completely different player. You know, he looks quite slow. He didn't look as confident. We weren't seeing him uh, attempting any dribbles or being his man. And based on that, it was agreed from both Ruben and Lampard that maybe getting consistent game time was key for Ruben to get back to his best as quick as possible. And I'll be honest, at the time, I was a bit disappointed, you guys know, when Ruben left. But I have to say, in the long term, I think that benefits the player significantly because the only way to get back to full speed is consistent game time. And the club like us that has such a, a strong, strong squad can be really afford to give Ruben like, what, 10, 15 games in the Premier League consistently until he finds his form? Not really. And for me, it made even more sense behind why Ruben was loaned out. Now, today, Ruben came out to speak about Maurizio Sarri, which was a nice surprise. And Ruben was basically saying that under Sarri, that was the first time that he had a manager that really believed in him and gave him that confidence. Is this a dig towards Frank Lampard's? It wasn't, uh, if you read the article, the context was entirely focused on Sarri and 
you know, managers like Conte and Mourinho. And yeah, as Ruben said, Sarri told him exactly what he had to do to get himself back in the team. Ruben did that. And as we saw that season, you know, 40 appearances, 10 goals, 5 assists. He was, his influence was up there with Eden Hazard. I, I keep saying that. I haven't seen a guy that was really running things for the team like that. And I don't want to talk about that fateful, fateful friendly anymore. I'm trying to get that nightmare out of my head, you guys. However, you guys, once next season comes, it really feels like we're going to have a ridiculous midfield. If Ruben maintains what he's doing and even improves upon that and goes to that next level, imagine having him with Kai, Mason, Kante, a potential new CDM and I guess Gilmore or any of the squad guys in the team too. I look at that midfield and then I think, yes, this midfield is ready to start doing things and potentially start going for a trophy. So that was Ruben's story out of the way, you guys. How do you feel about him? Do you think he can come back and win his place back in the team? Let us know below. And for the final story, I'll be speaking quickly about Tamori and the updates surrounding his imminent loan signing for AC Milan. Now, it does seem like Milan are really going to have to quicken things up. They have their game this weekend against Atalanta and you know they've got Romanoli and Kaya uh, out of the team right now. They only have Masakio and Kalulu and they want Tamori to be part of the matchday squads. So to do that, they have to wrap things up and take a nail on reducing the option to buy that they originally wanted to do. Now, it does seem like Tamori is set to complete his medical this Friday, as reported by Fabrizio Romano. And of course, you guys, I'll be keeping a very close eye and paying great attention to what Tamori does in Serie A. I feel excited by this loan move and if I'm Tamori, I'm, I'm looking towards Kurt Zuma as my prime example. You know, Zuma was away from the squad for a while. I thought undeservedly at times, but he came back and, you know, getting that consistent game time, it, it did help him with his confidence and his ability to, uh, you know, come back to the team and show what he's about. So with Tamori going to an AC Milan team that is a much better loan than Everton and uh, Stoke City that Zuma had to go to, I think it's very exciting. Let's see what happens. And you guys, on that note, I'm going to wrap things up and keep things moving. I'm in EFC. This is Blue Lines TV. And before I go, you guys, I've released... An amazing series alongside guests like Football Therapy, Joe Tweedy. They're trying to break down, discuss, investigate what is happening with Lampard and the season. I've released a part one yesterday in regards to the three mistakes Lampard's made. And today, I've released the second part discussing our transfer business this summer and things that Lampard could do to help the new signings improve. So you guys, I'll see you later.